Hello and welcome to Endless Mode. I'm Captain Emoji. And I'm Mysterious Gamer X. And I'm Boku Bill. We're back with some more Monster Hunter. Pompa Doug. Handlers. We're oh. learning the ropes from the... I think he's like the chieftain's son. Like, uh, I know he said he was born and bred here. Like he's... He is Over from here. here. This is his place. Well, it may be his place, <laughs> but we're bringing a good look. And yeah, the weapon. That is the first topic of conversation usually with a stranger. <laughs> yeah, it is here. Oh, you can see the sun through our hair. That is. Everything's modeled. That is interesting. It's not just a big brick of polygon like it used to be back in the dark times. That is incredible. Um, I love the heavy armor and the giant sword. I think that's a that works really well. I do like the, the ridiculous oversized weapons this game brings to bear. Like, given how big the monsters are, it for some reason really works well. Mm hmm I I think it kind of legitimizes oversized weapons. Like a lot of a lot of the sort of high fantasy games that have them, they become kind of repetitive, maybe. But, uh. You're killing monsters the size of, of continents. Yeah. So you need... Oh, yeah, that big iguana guy is on the smaller side. The what what? The big iguana guy. Oh, iguana. Yeah, let's go kill him. Yeah, he's on the small side of the monsters. So. Well, he, he tried to spit at us, and so I, I feel like we gotta... <laughs> <laughs> Such I a spit tight on those that don't look. deserve respect. I'm so happy it came out exactly the way that I dreamed. Guild teamed us up for a reason. Oh yeah. She's our handler. Nobody uh, else could handle this look. <laughs> that would explain the glasses. She can't see us when that visor's That's not over. That's true. Her eyes. We're just sort of a friendly, blurry, reflective surface. <sighs> it's like how uh, Deadpool rooms with a, a blind lady. Oh, does I, I don't know enough about comics to know that, but... Uh, and at least some of the stories. He had a roommate, because uh, he needed a cheap place, and his roommate was blind. <laughs> uh, that was one of the few bits that like, they, they kept for the movie that I really liked, was the fact that he had a, a blind lady roommate. Who... I, I didn't even see the movie, I hate to say. I, I don't judge. I mean, like, it's not your it's not your jam. It is not, it is not so much my brand, but... Oh, look at the palico! Precious angel of light! Now that's your brand. <laughs> that is my brand. That is pretty much... The tiny kitten. Specifically my brand in as much a way as possible. So we're gonna we're gonna cook, which I've no, heard a lot about. Eat. Oh, okay. Yeah. We get to order a food. Oh, we have nothing to cook. We get to order a food, they make us a food, and hopefully we get stat buffs. Uh, I don't know about this one, but I know that at least the other ones, there was a chance it could go wrong. And then you would get stat debuffs because you went out with, like, a rumbles and the tumbles. Oh, boy. Healthy platter. Challenger's platter. Yeah. Comfort platter. Um, we pretty much... We but sort of notice... comfort plattered last weekend when we went to Cracker Barrel, and... Oh, yeah. I feel like it stuck with me to this day. Oh, yep, oh here we go. Oh, my God. Oh, the unpredictable platter. Oh, my God. There's a whole set of stats that this could do, uh, and it could go real good for us, or it could... Oh, my God. It's so yeah. cute. So I'm hoping it goes really well, but I'm I'll admit it's almost funnier when it goes bad. We got health, stamina, and a small attack up. So. That's great. Thank you, that you was, beautiful cat children. That was a good meal. Um, I don't know how it goes in this one exactly, but it is hilarious when it goes bad. Now, is there some kind of uh, companion game to this where you basically just manage a house of adorable little palico chefs and, like, keep uh, your kitchen stocked and sort of act as their landlady? There was a game landlady? where you were a palico, I want to say. There was, but it never it came, came out, out the, here. never came out in the States. I was very sad. Please release right. it in the States. This is our first job. Let's Give us the Peepo Peepo Simulator. Each quest has an objective. Okay, so this Our looks familiar, actually. Yeah. A specified number of we have to beat up Let's seven Jagras. It's to teach you how to we fight the things. The so we're not even fighting one of the big monsters. monsters. We're just Remember? fighting the uh, the smaller iguanas that wanted to eat us. Mm. We're going to beat some of those up and then... 
will uh, collect a reward for bringing back all those hides. So are the monsters always reptilian? Um, not all of them, but but primarily. Mm. Uh, I know that in some of their games we had like the the Barioth, which was like a big flying cat wyvern. Interesting. It was like a saber-toothed cat that was also a dragon, and it was oh in a big God. ice area, and it was terrifying because it was real fast. Going. That's such a good combination of things. Uh -huh. It was real cool looking, but it was a pain to fight. Um, there was like a big bunny sort of thing, mm -hmm. uh, and it did like a big penguin slide that always knocked me off guard. That was a pain. Uh. There was a dragon, and it was definitely somewhat dragonic. Like, it, it definitely had scales and some lizard features. Mm -hmm. But I kind of thought it looked like a big goat, because it had moss growing on it, and it had big horns in front. Mm -hmm. um, the first monster hunter had a Kirin. Oh, like, like the... A, like an honest-to-goodness Kirin. Yeah. yeah. like a little unicorn yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, it was... It was not too much bigger than our Palico, but it was lightning fast... It hit, like, a Mack truck, and it was, like, post-endgame content. <laughs> it was one of the hardest fights in that game. Um, and it had some ridiculous armor that you could make out of it. Like, you basically got a headband with a horn, and, like, it kind of looked like our undergarments. Like, you had, like, a little Aladdin mm -hmm. vest that had, like, scales that oh, shimmered. Great. And, like, a shiny belt with a big buckle. And, again, like, some short shorts. I mean... Uh, more for, say, if I make my own character, I really would love it if I had a kind of monster hunter meets Claire's summer sale outfit. Yeah, a lot of sequins, you can use that maybe a headband with some decorative flowers. Or... A distraction. Okay, so you hit these bells, you get health back. Well, I don't know exactly what they have for armor in this game. But there's usually some, like, side quests you can do mm -hmm. that have, like, a theme to them. And you can usually get a lot of the costume armor there. Uh, I know that there was there's almost always a bomber jacket. Oh, that's very for good. Instance. A bomber jacket would look very tight on it. Almost always a bomber jacket. There's usually a couple pairs of glasses. At least one pair of sunglasses, usually. Um, the person oh, who yeah. gives you your quests, I haven't seen her in this game but she was referred to as the Guild Sweetheart, and she was, like, their desk receptionist person, and she had, like, a cute little sailor outfit, mm -hmm. and you could get that in the Those game. The but, uh... Let's see how you hold up when you're on your own. This one's so different from the other ones in terms of its, like, setting mm -hmm. that I'm not sure what is going to make it uh, into this version. But... Uh, there's definitely no shortage of options for, for uh, clothing and armor. Um, Boy, you are just... There's a couple of outfits that, like, like everyone tends... Like a toddler tends... with a baseball bat. Yeah. Like I said, just sort of flail around with the big sharp thing until everything goes away. It is effective. It oh, is. Yeah. It is effective. Um, oh, could you give me a minute? I have to loot everything. <laughs> That's how this game works. I will say that uh, there's a couple armor sets during the course of the game that it seems like everyone kind of goes with just because they're good. But end game, everyone tends to look different because depending on what your fighting style and your preferred stats are, yeah. there might be different armor that's good for you. Or heck, I mean, I used to stick with certain sets of armor just because I really liked how they looked. What do you guys think of games that allow you to reskin armor so you can have armor with good stats, but you can take your favorite armor skin and slap it on top. I definitely prefer that. It's um, such a beloved mechanic to me. I, I think everyone should get to look oh. however they want and not be penalized with stats. Meanwhile, I do support, you know, like, going and looking for new things and, like, trying out different armors yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, what I like about this game is, is that there are no levels. Like, we're not a level one hunter. We're a hunter. Uh, the only thing that's really going to change is how good our stuff is. You are like the world's slowest, most mobile garbage disposal. <laughs> like, that blade is unstoppable, and it is coming for you. But not with any particular speed or urgency. Hey, it's true. trying to carve up your buddies. Just a... <laughs> a flash. 
And I hit a flash bug. Oh. Oh, do they spoil? Um. Well, they used to despawn. Uh, mostly the because the timer seems to be better in this game though, because it's a PS4 and not a Wii. I was gonna say they used to despawn because the game had a hard time showing everything at the same time. Is so it... like, it's like, ah, oh, it's dead. Let me de-render that, please. So is this typically a a uh, Nintendo console game or a, a Sony uh, console game? It started out on the PS2, uh, and then they had several very successful games on the PSP because it allowed for you to play with your friends via mm -hmm. the local uh, the LAN. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then for whatever reason, they went to the Wii and the 3DS. Hmm. Um, yeah, it did was, real well on the 3DS. Yeah, it did. I think it was actually on the 3DS, or there's like a 3DS um, exclusive or, or special skin or whatever. Good cat, have a sausage. Oh, my baby son has a sausage snack. Oh, my God. That's Gotta very give him cute. Treats. Give him them sodiums. Um, I think when I was working at GameStop, there was a, a release of the Is Monster Hunter release. collect everything. Monster Hunter 4, I think. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, I know in Japan they got a a very different Monster Hunter game that I guess has some more traditional RPG elements to it called Monster Hunter Stories, I think? And that's mm. the one that had the Amiibos. Oh, yeah, yeah. I actually have the... Well, I, I, I have given it unto you, but um, for uh, Animal Crossing, I got the Faelene Amiibo because I really wanted that little bitty baby cakes in my town. And he is adorable. Very worth it. And now he's safe. And now he, he's safe. Um, I did I did enjoy the dialogue where he talks about how... Oh, yeah. How he moved from a place full of, like, big monsters and stuff. But this place seems real nice. I mean, think about the tone shift from the Monster Hunter world to Animal Crossing. Oh, yeah. I mean, the worst thing he has to worry about now is bees. And or this scorpions. Game, yeah, and this game has bees. Or wasps. And they're and, the size of your head. Right, you they're know, the size of the palico. If you don't look too closely, we might just be uh -huh. kind of an anemic guy in this lighting. <laughs> in that nice sunset, yeah. Mm -hmm. I am bummed out that I uh, I didn't see the skin tone slider. I was so swept up in the look, I didn't even think about it. And Unfortunately, it's too late to mess with that, but whatever. Is it? Yeah. We can, we can fuss with the uh, makeup, though. Oh, okay. Turn on voice chat. That's oh. adorable. Right. That no. Uh, Never that. I was going to say, I don't want to have to tag this with the adult restriction. <laughs> we want to have positive associations with this game. <laughs> Maybe if we can get some friends oh, on, uh, we might put on the voice chat just so we can talk to them, but... Yeah. What this world needs. Yeah, I've heard hard. the I've heard the voice chat was complimented for how it's set up or something, but oh, I didn't pay too much attention to the to the article I was reading. That's good to hear. I look at these. Uh, I know I know I bought a keyboard specifically for the Wii U, or the yeah the Wii. Oh, to talk to people. Oh yeah. That's great. Because uh, they actually made a little wireless keyboard. I've still got it somewhere. Isn't that the what's what's the keyboard that you use? Oh, on my computer. Uh huh. Oh. That is a, like, 10 million old PS2, uh, PS2 port keyboard that used to light up. It is a PS2 port keyboard. Okay. Well, actually, I had the, I had the... Because it uses the old, uh, like, multi-pin system instead of the USB. <laughs> um, so I had an interesting experience. I was, I was talking to a, a teacher from a really small town, uh, over the phone, and he heard me typing... And he said, well, that's a really neat keyboard you got there. You got a mechanical keyboard. And I said, yeah, I, uh, I, I love mechanical keyboards. And he, he said, oh, that's great. You know, I've been, I've been hoarding mine for years. I said, well, I have good news because uh, of their fast response time. And um, gamers like them. So there's lots of uh, fancy mechanical keyboards available now. And he said, well, isn't that neat? I'll keep an eye out. And uh, about 10 or 15 minutes later, he, he sent me an email with pictures of his keyboard, of his keyboard with a sticker on the back from 1984. Wow. And so I, I said, well, that is so cool. It is also four years older than me. And then I sent him a picture of one of those uh, plastic key rings you can use to pop off the, the my, keys my, of the my. mechanical keyboard oh, yeah. to clean it. So I sent him a picture of one of those. I asked him if he'd ever seen one before. 
and he he said he hadn't and that it was very cool and that he he was very glad he met me so that he could pick up one of those for some maintenance. Nice. Just the nice just one of those super nice That's guys. yeah, no, that's a really wholesome transaction. Yeah. I like that. It sounded like he was about maybe eighty. Which, you know, when I when I looked up a little bit more, that looked about right. You know, small town teacher. Sure. Super sweet. Wow. That celestial helmet is pretty cool. The what now? That helmet. We got we got some sort of like a little halo oh, of spikes. Yeah, yeah. Like a punishing statue of liberty. <laughs> there you are, Fiber. Is that good <coughs> for the armor? What's that? Is that good for the armor, having that sort of conveyor belt sushi situation, with but with swords? <laughs> it's probably fine. Right. Yeah. It seems to work. I guess it lets him do quality control on it. I'm just waiting for something that's not supposed to go to get sent through. Mm -hmm. Is that just a big pillar? No, it's for Or part a of lance. a gun lance? Yeah. Mm. Okay, guys, what is a gun lance? Well, it's a lance... Uh -huh. That has gunpowder charges. Okay. That can go off in a big explosion okay. and also shoot spikes into monsters that later explode. Okay. It's like a Roman candle tied to a lance and also a shotgun. Pretty ridiculous. <laughs> but it's like, pretty good. That sounds like something that you encounter at 11 o'clock at night on 4th of July in a cul de sac that you're not allowed to go into. Um. So, the regular lance. Uh, it's the kind of lance you'd see at like a, like a, a medieval times <laughs> with the, with the knights on horseback, but because we're a monster hunter character, we're not on horseback, we just sort of carry it around and run with it. <laughs> oh good, they uh, actually have the tree in the game these oh, days. In, was good. that like an invisible thing before? Yeah. Okay, I have, I have a question. I used to have all of this printed out. <laughs> We can imagine many things that you might ride into battle on. What would a Palico ride into battle on? Um, a Great Dane. Okay. Or some other large breed of dog, I think. Okay. Now, people love their horses, though. Does the Palico love their, their doggo? I think I so. I don't see why not. Okay. Yeah. It is kind of like a large protection friend. Yeah. <laughs> Also, I think that the Palico would like the power dynamic in that of, you know, I am in charge. Not, I am the large mammal now. I am the large mammal now. I tell you where to go. Do, do Palicos have opposable thumbs? I mean, they were able to cook and wield weapons and stuff. So, I mean, I think they have, I think they have opposable thumbs in the same way that polydactyl cats do. Oh my god, that's, I was just about to mention polydactyl cats with their extra toes using their extra toes like opposable thumbs. They're the best. They can open cabinets and get into trouble and <laughs> open doors and grasp things and hold your hand with their little extra toes. Very good. I mean, really, it's, it's more beans. It's more beans for your buck when you look at it. And um, It's probably why Hemingway liked them. It's those good that's beans. That's true. It's those good beans. So if you did have a polydactyl cat... Um, there's a lot of great names. My family, uh, my cousins have a polydactyl cat whose name is Toad. T-O-E-D. Very good. Very good, right? Yeah. You could also maybe, this is maybe a little, a little bit of a, a long ride, but you could name them Chili, because they have at least three kinds of beans. Yeah, some extra beans. That's good. Um, what are some other good bean jokes that we can make for a polydactyl cat? while the game is trying to show off its very cool crafting system. Not really. Uh, dunk bone in lava, hammer it a few times. That's a great sword. <laughs> I mean, they do just have to put a handle on it, basically. Okay. Man. I feel like there's a dearth of good polydactyl cat names. Um, if you can think of one, please comment for, for future reference. Polydactyl cat names. We need a database of those. <laughs> mm -hmm. We do need it. That's, that's truly what the web has been looking for all these years. Where's that thing I just forged? Your, uh, your chef knife? There it is. So yeah, once you get one of the basic swords, in this case, uh, the bone sword as opposed to the metal sword. Oh, you can level you can, up? You can add a bunch of parts to it and reforge it as a better sword. 
So, um... Um... Mysterious Gamer X. So, uh... The bone sword goes through all the monster part trees. Uh Uh-huh. And so you're getting, like, more and more exotic and rare monsters to throw into that. Okay. Uh, the... The metal sword tree, because we do have that big metal sword that we started with, um... Typically, you have to mine rare ore, uh, like, you know, malachite mm. ore or adamantium or whatever, and put that in there. And so it becomes just a giant alloy by the end of it. But you didn't used to see where the tree went. And the tree forked and branched in weird ways, and uh, some of them would dead end kind of early, but they were easier to make. Mm. So, like, early game, maybe you'd do that. But then later you need to make another metal sword and level it up to that point so that you could do the more advanced tree later. And, like, none of this was really well explained. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I mean, I had all of this printed out and just sort of like a big sort of like Monster Hunter Bible next to my game. And it's funny where people draw the line between being, um, like, technique purists where, where they want they want that incredibly convoluted experience and the printouts and everything. And then people who just want to interact with the core of the game without without all of that. And I, I wonder often if it doesn't... Maybe it doesn't have to do with type of player you are, but more to do with when you enter into a game in the series. Like, when it was punishing versus maybe when it was it had, had its, its business more together. Or maybe right. when it became simplified, it became kind of a different game. You know, for people who... Where for Fallout 4 was their first Fallout game, I bet they loved that. Um, people where it was maybe New Vegas, it might have a different feeling. A different take on it, yeah. And yeah. then people who played like the original, like oh yeah, time based one that I still can't wrap my brain around. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, that's yeah, a very different experience for each of them, I'm sure. Um, I mean, I've played a lot of these, but I like it when the game includes information. Yeah. I don't like information being withheld Mm -hmm. or being put behind some kind of barrier of trial and error because that's just a huge time sink that I just don't... I don't have it in me anymore. Yeah, (laughs) and and this seems like the sort of thing that should be accessible. Like, unlike maybe, I don't know, the only example I can think of off the top of my head are, like, Pokemon IVs. Sure. Which are, you know, I don't think they need to be visible to every player but yeah well this makes perfect sense but i can also play the pokemon games without any of that knowledge right. and still have a good time right like i'm not trying to become the very best i'm just trying That's to play true. the game and interact with it and trying to fill that team with as many pumpkaboos as possible have a pumpkaboo patch uh you know i don't know more. i don't know if my team and your team could hang out why uh i like a lot of bug types what does bug do to ghost again Oh, they'd be fine with ghost types. I'm just thinking about the fact that you'd have a bunch of pumpkins. Well, I mean, they are pumpkins. Meanwhile, it's like, look at my crickets and locusts and, you know, other, like, pests. Yeah. Well, you know, they are they are pumpkins, but primarily they are spooky boos. So I think I think they'd get along just fine. Um, but, uh, yeah. This has been, what if we had Pokemon? <laughs> with Captain <laughs> Emoji and Boca Bell. What if you had Pokemon? Tell us in your comments. I'd have, like, two pumpkaboos and a twin stroller. No, we're focusing on this game. <laughs> well, now our sword is a different color than our armor. Yeah, well. These things happen. <sighs> I will say I think the sword is going to change forms a lot more times, so... Pompadug knew it would be a challenge <laughs> in this new world. I just, I just don't think he saw this coming. <gasps> the baby. Oh, the baby's so cute. I do like that we've gotten it down to a science, summoning big pterodactyl monsters and then roping them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's like Uber, but somehow more ethical to fly on the, <laughs> the captive pterodactyl. Okay. Um, I do want to take a second to commend Home. Mysterious Home. Gamer X for moving Please through this so efficiently and so quickly. Wanna get going? It's true. There's no running around in circles and uh, being under-equipped. There, there is a reason I'm not behind the stick. We did it yeah. in the demo. Yeah. We humored me. I got really lost. 
But I, 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 I like to think I did pull through in the end, but it took me a bit longer than you, it really should have. You just don't have the same internal compass that, that some other folks I think have. I broke it falling down some stairs as a kid or something. Yeah. Like, it points, like, due southeast now. Mm-hmm. It's just a little bit off. I was banned. Uh, I had a job that was outdoors for a number of years, and I was banned from touching anybody else's compass because I would magnetize compasses uh. so frequently. I have no idea what, what the process was, what was happening, but I would... Screw them up. It's your magnetic personality. Mm, oh, thank you. So why can't I grab herbs? Is your crafting pouch full? Um, no. Hmm. Do you need a special sickle to harvest herbs? No. Oh, one of the things they changed on this one that I absolutely love is that, um... I believe you have all of your gathering tools with you at all times, and they don't take up a spot in your inventory. Oh, that's great. Yes. Uh, like, the pickaxe used to take up a spot in your inventory, which meant that if you didn't need to mine stuff, you'd leave it behind, because you needed that extra space to carry stuff back. Oh, the gentle monster. It didn't ask for that. Yeah, well, I need meat. Oh, there we <laughs> I mean... Those we do friends. use every part. Let's see you take him out every of part of the beast. Like, huh. um... Oh, giant dragonfly! Just like the giant dragonflies of Be olden Ooh. days. I Carboniferous He's era? angry. I'm gonna actually have to look that up. I don't want to stick my foot in my mouth. Who is this guy? Like, That's the Kestodon. Oh. I was gonna say, he's a new friend. Ooh. I like his very big forehead. He's kind of like a Pachycephala bunch of much of. Oh, he has smaller friends. Oh, I was right. The giant dragonfly is a Meganera, a genus of extinct insects from the Carboniferous period, 300 million years ago or so. Delightful. These guys are really cool. During the Carboniferous Carboniferous period, there's a whole lot more uh, oxygen in the air, so insects could get gi-enormous. Um, Giant centipedes and millipedes and all sorts of yeah. other junk. Yeah. Well, and, and whatnot. I think I wrote an essay in, in like, second grade about how... Oh, look! Look how... at the birds! They're attracted to the, oh, the downed dinosaurs. Like, they, they flocked to where uh, Mysterious Gamer X had downed one of the uh So apparently the big ones are male. Oh. Right. Let's look for another group. Oh, like the Jaggy of the Jaggy, I remember. Yeah. Like, they were the the, the two different raptor types. Those are cool, though. Um, I like they were getting more herbivores. Because uh, the, the previous games had, like, maybe two types of herbivores. And, uh, I get it. They wanted to leave room on those discs for all of the cool predators that you could fight. But... Only having, like, two things for them to eat was always weird. You know, I've never seen many, many games really trouble themselves with realistic carnivores or, uh, uh, the super balanced ecosystem. Sure. Does it bother anybody else when wolves are always, like, intent on eating you in games? Like, bears make sense for why they Over will here. maul you in a game. That, I mean, that more or less tracks. But... I never see a reason why wolves would bother with you sure. in fantasy games. The extremely prickly people with not a lot of meat on their bones? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I just assume the folks that make those games don't encounter a lot of wolves in their lives. Yeah, so no, I think that's, that's probably They make true. a good video game enemy. Uh-oh. So I just found out what's going on. What? My items are auto-crafting themselves. Oh. Not sure I like that. There's probably a way to turn it off. Or to choose what item is auto-craft. Uh, I will say I, for one, like the fact that you haven't had to stop every couple of feet to make potions. How, can Be you careful. go into the water, or um, are you prevented? Not sure. What's up? God. There are games where it's been possible, and then the early games, it was not. Uh... Like, the early Monster Hunter games, the only interaction you had with the water was fishing. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was even a monster that you could fish up, the uh, Plesioth. It was a big, snaky monster, and it was cool looking. 
but uh, you had to fish it out of the water. Um, I have to reiterate, but you with are three, a walking garbage disposal. You are just <laughs> unstoppable, gigantic lake. Just a big blender, yeah. Doing work with that new uh, bone sword. Nope. Yeah. Oh, it's got a lot of sort of firm places. On a lot it. of hard parts. <laughs> that is an enemy designed for a hammer. Yeah, it's not very tall. <laughs> that too. Uh, I guess somebody actually put out like a a fun weapon chart for people who hadn't played the game before to mm -hmm. give a little bit of insight onto what the weapons do. And uh, they were talking about the. The great sword is mm -hmm. talking about the fact that it does high damage and it has decent range, uh, and then it talks about attack speed five years, <laughs> um, and then you know it talked about the hammer, which is definitely my preferred weapon. Mm -hmm. And you know it gave you know oh. stats for speed and strength and all that good stuff, and then it's like range, sma and it's like smash toes. I remember your hammer from the Fable playthrough. I remember that <laughs> hammer. It is it is my preferred weapon. Uh, see the monsters despawned. Oh no! Well now you know how long it takes, I guess. Wait. How what? dare you hurt that snowbell? What were you wetting at? I'm not quite sure how he got. Work. That just about wraps up not sure what hitbox interacted. Yeah. Hey, come here. Gotta say the scavengers work really well over here. Oh, yeah. Do you think anybody's ever named their kid Jonadon instead of Jonathan? <laughs> what, like on accident? I mean, well, on accident, I absolutely. Uh, I, was, I was more thinking sort of an intentional... Maybe somebody had a paleontologist parent with a sense of humor. <laughs> or Sarasaur. That's actually very good. Jeffosaurus. Jeffosaurus. Here. Oh, looks like a great Jagger's footprint. Hmm. It came Look at those from there. Oh, it's getting its crunch on. Have a little tasty snack. Wow. Whoa! Didn't even chew. No, no! Whoa! Gotcha! That was. Snowball's like, I'm out! Right, yeah, I was like, that's, that was very intense to watch. Great Jagras. If you're not ready, you can return to base and take on the Great Jagras quest later. Your weapon is losing its Oh, strength. that's nice of them. Create some distance. They'll let you go back to go. camp if you haven't done any of the upgrade stuff. <laughs> Wanna get going? Oh, yeah. Because uh, I've certainly gone into a mission like this, like, half-cocked before. You need to call your friends for help. Go to the menu and select SOS Flare to You can call them. friends for help. How cool is that? When you go up against some of the tougher monsters. Yeah. In order for the scout flies to better track a target monster, we need to keep finding traces of it. Like footprints. Yeah, we might as well end on Good. I know. You're turning up a lot of clues. Yeah. Looking awesome with our fireflies, or do you mean by trying to defeat the monster? Gonna take out that uh, great Jagras. So Iguanodon, remind, I feel like this is correct, it is not a real, no, it is a real dinosaur, but it was put together in a really weird way. Oh yeah, we, uh, right? I think we put the neck on the wrong end. I think we put a toe claw on the nose for no particular reason. <laughs> and we're like, look, it's got a spike nose. Nature is mysterious. <laughs> Look at the Pelicha Picho. Okay. We've tracked the great Jagras enough for the scout flies to lead us to it. Ugh. It's so soft. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, monster hunters don't take falling damage. Oh, nice. It's true. There, there is no falling damage in this game. Like, we can take some absolutely monumental leaps and we'll be fine. <laughs> I like that it tells you when you can eat. Yeah. I'd have to go back to camp for that, though. Oh, uh, you don't have any trail mix? <laughs> uh, not as far as stuff stat buffs go, no. I think I just saw a lungfish jump in the water. 
That's entirely possible. They've actually got some really cool fishes. That's awesome. Um, I know one of the first things you had to hunt in three was uh, literally just a big sunfish, like a giant sunfish. Uh, sunfishes always have given me the heebie-jeebs. Is and that because both their eyes are on one side? Uh, no, those are or flounders. Are those flounders? Yeah, sunfishes. Um, they're like they're gigantic. Right. And they're just cartilage. Kind of and the they. Camera. And fins. Uh, yeah, they just kind of like hang out and float. Whereas, whereas flanders have the two eyes on one side, lay in the mud. So, I, I guess if you're not a fan of uh, sunfish, you probably don't like the Pokemon Love Disc. No, I do love Love Disc because the baby Love Disc is a precious little Valentine. Um. Is Love Disc yellow? Uh, I think they might be pink. I think they're pink. Yeah, see? There's there's another thing going for it. I can't remember when they came out. If it was, uh, Ruby or Sapphire or Crystal, but they were adorable. No, I'm, I'm down with most Pokemons. Um... I feel really bad, though, because I, I have not played Moon bought it, just never, never clicked. Yeah, I haven't really sat down with Sun either, so I'm, I'm in the same boat there. Which is weird, because, like, I got back into the card game, and, uh, like, at least in theory, the game should be very much my jam, because it sounds like a more laid-back Pokemon game. We're so tired. Like, there's, like, there's no gyms. You just, you go and you, you have a for-fun battle on the beach against some guy. And, you know, you go island hopping with your Pokemon. I'm like, no, this very much sounds like it would be my uh, my preferred too, way of doing it. Too many games. Too many good games to play. There has been a lot coming out. Too little time. Like, it's it's, it's a good problem to have, but at the same time, uh, it does mean that I, I don't always finish games as often as I'd like. I think if people saw how much No Man's Sky I, I, I played instead of other games, I would, like, have my... My just a repo team would come and take my PS4, <laughs> and and I'd be kicked off the channel, uh, <laughs> and I'd have to learn how to scrapbook. That's a joke. I know how to scrapbook, but it would be my only hobby. <laughs> no, I think we just we need to do that. Uh, no Man's Sky travelogue that we were talking that about. That would be so fun. You know, a, a lonely planet of No Man's Sky, which is. Not a bad joke, now that I think about it. No, he had multiple. a meal. Oh, good. Ooh. Chop off his gristle. Probably got uh, some health your back from that, I bet. Keep your distance and use the Not to be indelicate, but does he hork up a meal if you stab him? Oh. That Ugh. would be interesting. Uh, I do notice that he swells up a bit and then does like a, a belly bounce. Which is kind of amusing. <laughs> he basically oh no. just flops. Snowball, our precious angel's taking a beating. Oh boy. That might really Cut open the belly. Release the beast. Oh lord. <laughs> I do always find it funny when the small ones get in the way. Ah. Rose. Oh, Almost man. Almost got the three-hit combo in. I think it did vomit on you a little bit. Yeah, it did. Oh, he does the he does the death roll like the. Honestly, this is what he's this is kind of like how our bigger cat fights, mm. just sort of rolling, letting gravity do its thing. Yeah. We have one cat that's just sort of all sharp parts. Um, and assassination techniques, and another cat who's very heavily armored through fur, um, yeah. and and very friendly and roly poly. He is a fluffy roly poly friend. Although Snowball is making me me love that white fluffy situation so much. I could use a third. Okay. The <laughs> <laughs> now hit it with all you've got. Oh, is it trapped in vines? Yeah. Oh! So what does that affect? 
Oh, uh, just means you can't keep moving, and we got some free hits in. Um, oh. There are traps that we can make that do stuff like that. Oh, it's But I don't think we have any of those handy. It's Look at fine that being broken is really weird. Why do you think lizards have those little cheek circles? To make them extra kawaii. It does make them extra kawaii. Could it be some kind of reset button? You know, like on the back of the Tamagotchi? Oh. <laughs> Gotta hold it until you hear that, hear that beep. That dang death roll. Come here, you. Look, the monsters Give him a sharp hug. Chances are to retreat to its nest to recuperate. Nice. Cut through them frilly bits. Speaking of palicos. Got one. Meow. Meow. <laughs> He's in his silent recording mode yeah, where he doesn't I, meow out loud. He even mouthed a meow at me, but he's being he's very a polite quiet. guy. He's a polite guy. Oh, there we go. What? There we go. What? Say that again? Is that what's happening? Are we being reminded? Probably. Probably gently. I grew spines. I hate when I grow spines. At least it's not the, the Nair Gigante. Yeah, they aren't the spines. So what's a Nair Gigante? Um, they, uh, they put out an extra demo uh, right before the game came out with one of the new monsters from later in the game. And, uh... It was a big leathery black dragon with uh, big like bony like spine protrusions, mm -hmm. and it was basically just a rolling assault of death in spines. It was not kind to us. It wasn't kind to anybody. <laughs> Did you beat it? Oh no! Oh my <laughs> no! You gave it what for? That's all you can do. Um, oh, is it dead? It's it is it's taking a nap. It's actually getting health back right Bad now. Day for it. Look at the little like bubbles coming out of its nose. Oh my god! Execution style. It just saw every one of its ancestors. So it just saw back <laughs> to the protozoa. So um, when they're sleeping like that, you can sneak up on them and do all sorts of stuff and get ready. And I have literally like done a circle around a monster and just set up barrel bombs. <laughs> And then walked away with my bow gun and shot them. It was very satisfying. Oh, there's a timer at the top. Yeah, uh, you only have so long after a mission is over to... To collect goodies? Yeah. It's to keep you from taking too long or... Uh, keep you from going back and, like, mining and doing other stuff and not, like, moving forward. So does uh, does Monster Hunter have any kind of store where you pay real money for? It does not. Goodies. It's nice. The uh, the creator of the game actually was talking about uh, like loot boxes and microtransactions, and he said it would cheapen the game, because the game is all about accomplishment, and if you could just buy a crate full of monster parts or buy armor, then what's the point of like hunting the monsters to get the better gear and stuff, which is like the whole progression system. That is an excellent point. It is. I, uh, I, I really appreciated that. Um, hmm. I do think it would cheapen the experience oh, that's a lot of if feathers. maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's check it out. If you could just sort of like ignore parts of the game and progress without like playing, because a lot of the game is is the game training the player. Um, because you start to recognize patterns of how the monsters move and. Uh, you start to know where the monsters tend to roam. Whoa! What? Hello. What are you, Chicky Do? The Pookie Pookie. Pookie. The Pookie Pookie. Oh, I totally called it. There's always a weird googly-eyed flying monster after you're done fighting oh, the big. Oh, I love it. It's like half chameleon, half Quetzal. Oh, good. It's, it's poison. Half God's own mistake. 
Look over there. And uh, a quarter cute, a quarter and, Muppet. What the heck is that? In the previous game, there was the Kuro Peko, which was like just sort of a kind of a big pelican dragon, like it had the big throat sack and uh, big leathery wings. It flew a lot, and it was real light. And uh, it was a weird-looking monster, and it was kind of fun in a goofy sort of way. But uh, the thing it could do that was really weird was it could mimic other calls because it was part bird, basically. So it could make sounds from other monsters. Hmm. And uh, I've seen the Kuro Peko summon terrible nightmare beasts. <laughs> it's like, oh, there's a Rathalos, which is a, a big fire-breathing actual dragon. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a Rathalos nearby. So it rears its head up, swells its big throat sack, and makes the the noise that it makes. And I'm like, oh, no, you didn't. You didn't just do that. I'm not ready for that. I didn't bring anything to fight that with. And then I just see it dive bomb everything and do a strafing run of fireballs. And I'm just like, oh, no, run. I like this googly-eyed chicken. Yeah. We uh want to tackle it next time? Next time. That's okay. definitely a next time. Thank you guys for sticking with us. This game has been so much fun. Um, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Bye.